get a nice clean cut using a circular saw from this to this. What's going on guys, I'm Bill and welcome to Bill's How To. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to cut a nice clean edge using a circular saw, particularly on material like chipboard, particle board, and in my case, melamine. This is probably the most difficult to cut without having a jagged edge or blowout caused by the circular saw. We're gonna be testing out a whole range of different methods to show you which one is the absolute best, including the most controversial and debated out there, which is the masking tape. Let's get straight into it, guys. Let's do this. All right, guys, so we've got here my everyday circular saw with my everyday blade. And what I mean by that is I use this blade for the vast majority of my tasks. We've got here a framing blade with 24 teeth. Keep that in mind because we're going to look into the teeth later on and the type of blade. Okay, so what you need to know here is the direction that the blade spins in. It rotates in a clockwise direction, which means it's going to be rotating from the bottom coming back up through the top. And the reason why I'm showing you this is this is gonna help you understand what's actually causing the tear out or the blowout on your material. That way you guys can come up with your own creative ways to try and prevent this from happening. So we're gonna test this firstly on a piece of framing timber, okay? As I said, whenever you cut the material from the base, the base is always gonna be clean because that's cutting into the material. It compresses into that material. It's got a bit of support. It won't splinter or tear out. As it exits the material, that's where it's gonna splinter. There's no support and it's gonna basically blow out. So if you have a piece of material with a grain, okay, which we don't have on our melamine, um, what we're gonna be doing here is cutting with the grain where possible. So the lines, the direction that the grain goes in on the timber, if you cut along the grain, that's gonna slice those fibers and help you basically slice between the fibers rather than cutting it. So I'll show you guys a bit of a demonstration. We'll cut with the grain first. I'll show you guys the back firstly. Okay, so the back we've got a nice clean cut there, which is what I've just explained as we come up to the top. Because we cut with the grain, you don't have as much of a tear out or a blowout. You can see there, it's actually pretty good. What we're gonna do now is cut quickly across the grain to show you the difference. Once again, bottom first. Nice and clean on the base, as I suggested before, it always comes out nice and clean on the bottom. As it comes up to the top where it exits, that's where it splits those fibers. We don't have any support up on top and that's where it blows out. All right guys, so the rest of our demonstration is gonna be on this melamine board right here. Okay, it's gonna be the exact same whether you're cutting plywood, you're cutting a uh, chipboard, particle board, it's gonna be the exact same process. So what you're gonna see here today is the results that you guys can expect. Now the first mistake that most people make is using the wrong blade. Now the blade that I've shown you guys before is my everyday framing um, uh, blade for the circular saw. That is not what you should be using whenever you wanna have a nice, clean, fine cut finish. What you should be using is something with a lot more teeth. What we've got here is a 60 teeth Diablo blade. This one here is gonna give me a lot more finer finish. We're gonna be testing out the comparison between the 24 teeth and also the 60 teeth, which will hopefully give you guys a bit of an understanding as to what kind of result you can expect. Now with masking tape, as I've just shown you, the, the um, tear out or the blowout happens as the blade exits the timber. And the reason for that is there's no compression on top, there's no support on top to prevent those fibers um, or material from blowing out or splitting. So this is where this concept comes in to play. It basically is being used as some sort of support or compression or to hold down those fibers um, in order to allow the blade to cut through without forcing that material up and out. So that's where this um, masking tape comes into practice or the idea anyway. I personally don't like it and we're gonna be testing it out today and I'll show you guys, you can make your own decision afterwards. So we're gonna have our first cut, no tape, no nothing, we'll cut straight through. We'll use our regular masking tape and we'll also use our frog tape as well, just to test it out and see if this one here is gonna hold up any better than what your everyday masking tape would. So let me just quickly mask these ones here up. We'll use our tape, masking tape first. Whenever you're using the masking tape, make sure you press it down all nice and firmly because if you don't, you're basically not gonna get the result or the concept or the idea that you're trying to achieve. So this needs to be as flat as possible to provide as much support as possible. 
we'll try our frog tape next. Once again, push that all down, make sure it's all nice and flat, adhered to the surface. All right, so now we're gonna cut straight into this material. We'll come up halfway. I'll show you the back end of it, and I'll show you the front. All right, so if we have a quick look, 24 teeth, no tape. It's completely jagged all the way through. We'll take off our tape section now. Regular masking tape. See what kind of a difference we have. You could say slightly a little bit better, but is that an acceptable finish? Definitely not. We'll take off our frog tape now. And if we compare all three side by side, to be honest, all three are pretty horrendous. All right, so if we flip this one here over, if you have a look at all three of those, you can see there we've got a perfect cut on the base. All three, whether you're using tape or no tape, 24 teeth or 60 teeth, you get a nice clean cut down on that base there. Flip it back over, horrible finish. So I'm gonna show you guys two more methods that most people out there won't really show you guys. So we've got here no tape, obviously. 24 teeth, 24 teeth. Okay, we're gonna have one more 24 teeth. And I'm gonna show you guys two more methods that you can use to try and get a nice clean cut. All right guys, so the next method we're gonna be looking at involves making multiple cuts over the same line with the circular saw to prevent that excessive tear out. Now the way you do this is by taking your circular saw and you wanna set the depth. So we've got here our depth adjustment on the back. Simply raise that up, make sure you've got your battery out, and we're just gonna probably set it to about a third of the depth, which we should have right there. Lock that one there in place. So you can see there we've only just got those teeth protruding, and we're gonna make a series of cuts. That's the reason why I've clamped down this timber, to act as a fence or a guide, um, or even a rail, whatever you like to call it so that we get a nice consistent cut over the same line. This will only work if you've got um, some sort of fence on the side or railing on the side to give you a consistent cut over the same line. So pull back that guard. I had a little bit of initial blowout at the start as I dropped that down. But I'll show you guys what it looks like now. So you can see the first three jagged attempts. We've got our first cut here. That's where I initially just clipped it a little bit. Shouldn't have happened. What we're gonna do now is readjust our depth to a little bit deeper and we're gonna cut through that two more times until we've gone completely through the material. Cut back through once again, we've got our guide here. So we should go directly over that exact same line. Drop it down once more until we're gonna completely clear that material. All right, so now we've completely cut through. We can remove our clamps and I'll show you guys what kind of finish you guys can expect. That is much, much cleaner. Almost 100% perfect. We've got a few little chips here where I probably pushed it a little bit too far, but generally that one there is pretty good way um, to get around having a perfect cut, especially when you're using the 24 teeth blade still. Now remembering we should be using a 60 teeth um, or something a lot finer with a lot more teeth. So the last method I'm gonna show you guys on the 24 teeth circular saw blade is creating a little support. So what we've got here is a scrap piece of melamine. You can use any kind of timber clamp that on top and what that's going to do is compress everything once again taking the tape um, idea but converting it into something that might provide a little bit more support so we've got here a scrap piece clamped on top that's going to hopefully support the top fibers and prevent that from tearing out once again 24 teeth cut straight through <laughs> And you can see there, it's a much better cut, but it's still not perfect. So now we can have a quick look at all five different methods. 
Number one, 24 teeth, no tape, complete blowout, tape, tape, complete blowout. Multiple cuts was pretty good to be honest, um, especially on a 24 teeth blade. That one there wasn't too bad. We did have a couple little chips which still probably wouldn't be acceptable anyway. And then on the end here, trying to compress that material down, you can see if I run my finger over the top, it wants to blow out, but it just didn't have the opportunity to completely blow out. So maybe if we use something a little bit more dense, um, that we could compress down a bit harder onto this material here, that might have prevented those little blowouts. But we're now going to swap over to the 60 teeth and see just how much difference there is. So now I've got the ultra fine blade in with 60 teeth. I'm going to save a little bit of time on this video, run through all five different methods, and I'm going to show you guys the finished result. So let's have a quick look at our finished results. We've got our 60 teeth with no tape. You can still see there is a fair bit of blowout. I'm going to compare them both side by side. 24 teeth and 60 teeth. We'll remove our tape. See if that made any difference. Still got blowout. It is a little bit less. Take off our frog tape, which appears to be about the same. Then we've got our multiple cuts here where we initially scored it went through another third and then the final piece of it which that one there is absolutely perfect nice finish right there and then we've got our last one where we stuck on a scrap piece of timber for added support to prevent that blowout now that blowout has significantly reduced there is still a little bit especially if I run my fingers over the top but I'll cut this one here down and I'll show you guys side by side so let's have a quick look at these side by side. We've got 60 teeth up the back here, 24 teeth on top. If we line these ones here all up as much as possible. Okay, so we've got 24 teeth with no tape. You can see they're completely gouged out on the 24 teeth. 60 teeth wasn't too bad, but still not an acceptable finish. With tape, just as much blowout on all three. We compare the tape over here as well. Once again, blowout on all of them. So that tells us that tape doesn't really do very much. If we have a look at our next two methods here. Okay, we've got multiple cuts, 24 teeth up on top. We still had a couple little chips here along the side. Definitely not very clean. Compared to the 60 teeth with multiple cuts, that is absolutely flawless. Perfect little cut right there. And then we have a look at our last option which was to compress something over the top, scrap piece of metal, uh, sorry, scrap piece of timber. Over the top here, 24 teeth, still plenty of tear out. 60 teeth, much better, but all in all, I think we've got our winner right here, which is 60 teeth, multiple cuts. So there we have it guys, that is our testing complete, our 24 teeth versus 60 teeth versus a whole different range of methods um, using tape and using something for a bit of added support and multiple cuts. The clear winner was the multiple cuts with the correct blade. Um, using the correct tool for the job always makes a world of difference. Hopefully now you guys know that and when it comes to tape, we unfortunately didn't have much luck, which I've never had luck with to uh, begin with. So hopefully that now clears up the misconception about using tape. If you've got any feedback or suggestions, put them in the comment section below, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and you've learned something new. As always, like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Bill. Thanks for watching Bill's Out Too.